Hey guys, I'm Kyle. Welcome back to another video. So this is the start of a new series and it's going to be unlike anything I've done on this channel, but I'm really excited to get into some non four wheel drive kind of stuff. So let's check it out. Hmm. So this bicycle is the starting block for what I am hoping to be a four horsepower, 3000 watt electric bicycle. And the catch is I'm going to attempt to power it with drill batteries in series to make a 72 volt battery pack. Um, I've seen a couple things online of it being done, um, but really not much. And that's surprising to me with how expensive lithium ion batteries are in other forms. Obviously drill batteries are expensive too, but not like um, larger batteries are. Um, I'm surprised that nobody's done this. I, um, just got started. Um, so you can see so far I took off the front gear shift because my, um, electric motor is going to join up with the pedals at that sprocket. So I'm not going to have a front shifter, um, but I'm going to keep the seven speed rear. So hopefully if this works, I'll still have a seven speed gear shift here and then you can see I've already I cut this um, in, in half in about in half the shifter went out to here but I needed space for this is my throttle um, so I needed space for that trimmed the gear shift down um, and let me show you kind of what I'm starting with all right, so this is going to be the point of no return for this bike being a bicycle ever again. Um, I got the tool that I needed to get this front sprocket assembly off. Um, I have decided to go with no pedals. I'm going to do foot pegs instead. Uh, when the motor's at full throttle, the pedals would have been spinning at like 3.3 <laughs> revolutions per second. Um, and they would be driven at that speed by the motor. So if your leg or your toe or anything got in the way of those pedals spinning around that fast, um, realistically with this powerful of a motor, I wasn't going to use manual assistance anyways. I wasn't going to be adding power to the motor. Um, so just safer to go no pedals, um, and straight motor drive. Um, but... Once I cut this here, there will be no going back to bicycle. So, so here we go. All right, so a little update here, or uh, kind of a big update. I got the, this is just an Amazon um, cargo rack, and then I made this to mount my 72 volt battery pack. Um, so these are just little, um, adapters, I guess you would call them, from eBay. Um, these are um, knockoff Ryobi batteries, 18 volt, 18, 36, 54, and 72. So um, the pedals have been removed from both sides. I removed the um, shifter for the front where there used to be three gears here. Um, outside two gears have been removed and replaced with this one for my um, go-kart chain. The chain is going to go up to going to this is the start of uh, this bracket. So it'll have an 11 tooth going down to this 47 and then it'll have a 47 going to an 11 tooth on the motor, which will live around here. Um, so really happy with how these bearings turned out um, because I needed these holes to be um, one and one eighth inch for that bearing. Uh, and I did not feel like going through a bunch of quarter inch plate with a hole saw. Um, I had a local fabrication shop make these. They turned out great. Um, got it welded onto the frame and yeah that's the update this is a little ebay anderson connector uh, that i got to be a quick disconnect for my battery pack 
and uh, I'm going to keep working on, I'll get this chain finished up and I'll get the motor mounted and that chain go to there. Eventually, um, these are going to need tensioners, um, but I'm going to see if I can kind of test run it, if I can get the tension close enough that I can do kind of a trial run without them. All right, and fast forward to the first test drive. This um, went pretty well. <laughs> it was really exciting to actually see, uh, you know, twist the throttle and got some forward movement out of the bike. However, it was apparent that there were a lot of adjustments needed um, for chain tensioners and I could not get the chain to stay on the sprocket. The second part of it was gear ratio. I geared this down <laughs> at a 25 to 1 gear ratio. So I wanted to gear it down to where um, at, at top motor RPM it would have a low top speed. Um, that gear ratio was way too low and it caused um, it, basically you had to give it more than 50% throttle. You had to give it a lot of throttle and get the RPMs way up before the motor was actually driving the bike. And that combined with the chain tensioner issue led me to uh, abandon my middle shaft idea and go to just a straight um, motor to pedal sprocket ratio. So fast forward to test drive number two. So I have ordered an 80 tooth sprocket to slow that down and a nine tooth sprocket instead of the 11 to hopefully gear this lower, um, gear this as low as I can without using a uh, third spindle. But of course I am impatient and what you see here is the 11 tooth sprocket that that came with for a go-kart with the 42 tooth, uh, sorry, 54 tooth sprocket that that came with for the go-kart axle. But instead of going to <laughs> A, an 8 or 10 inch go-kart tire it is going to a 26 inch bicycle wheel which uh, in its current configuration will make the acceleration not great and the top speed way higher than it should be so uh <laughs> this is um most likely temporary until my new sprockets uh get here but I am going to take it outside because I am way too excited to not ride it. And, um, oh yeah, and uh, pretty obvious, but I didn't mention it. Um, so obviously I had the batteries back here, um, lots of torque, lots of instant torque from that electric motor, um, making it very uh, jumpy. And so not only do I want to, uh, long term, not only do I want to have cargo um, container, basket, or, or some sort of cargo storage over the rear tire, um, but I also wanted to move that battery weight forward, um, so I made what you see here, which includes my ignition key. So this is on the lowest speed setting. All right, so I haven't been um, filming the test rides, which is unfortunate because this thing has been a ton of fun and it's working really well. Um, but you guys are long overdue for an update and I'm down here working on it tonight, so I'm gonna give you guys a little update. Um, the 80 tooth that was supposed to go there did not fit the chain. So for now, 54 is the biggest chain uh, driven sprocket I can find. I got the nine tooth put on there so it is geared a little bit lower um, has plenty of acceleration and plenty of top speed 
Um, but on the last test ride, I was climbing a really long, really big hill, um, and it blew two of my batteries completely. Um, so it, it seems that this level of power output is too much for the cheap Chinese batteries. And uh, what I should have done in the first place, went ahead and bought myself the Ryobi high performance batteries. So um, aside from the new batteries, um, the nine tooth sprocket made me have to do a chain tensioner. Um, so that is this little guy here. And um, that's not final yet. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't stay on as well as I want it to. Um, but we'll get that figured out. Um, I have the old uh, bike foot pegs or uh, pedals welded back on um, just for um, just for fun. And the big update, if you were wondering where all this went, so I made a panel for this side that allowed me to mount my motor controller here instead of back there. Again, moving weight forward getting my wiring cleaned up that can all be tucked away inside the bike frame now. Um, but the other thing that I found was even with these high performance batteries, uh, climbing that same big hill, um, it, um, one of the batteries went completely to zero while the other three were still at 75%. So I think it was just a safety, uh, a current draw shut off scenario. Um, the battery did charge back up fine, unlike the Chinese ones that are completely done. Um, and But what that told me is that if I'm drawing too much current from one string of batteries, that means I need to have two sets of batteries in parallel. Uh, these four batteries are in series, so I need to add another four batteries in series, another 72 volts, um, so that the motor controller is drawing from two parallel strings of batteries. The other thing that will do is give me a much better range. When I tested my four amp hour batteries, these are the six, but I also have a set of four. The four amp hour batteries only got me two and a half miles. Um, so I'm hoping that with a total of 10 amp hours at 72 volts, uh, drawing less current from each battery will make them last longer and I'll hopefully get a decent range out of it. So this is a good uh, point in the build process for me to show you kind of some of the wiring. This is my setup for the next four batteries and this is kind of behind the scenes of what it looks like. So uh, from your positive in, it goes positive to negative. That goes to the positive of the next battery, negative to the positive of the next battery, negative to the positive and that comes out your negative. Um, so now I get to take my wiring panel back apart and add this to the existing positive and negative coming from the first battery. And this is going to go like that. I'll have uh, a little slot here on each side for a buckle strap um, so I can have like a duffel bag on top of these four batteries that will be strapped down. So it's gonna be my cargo space as well as my next four batteries and that um, hides all of my wiring with that design there. So I'll get this all um, built and wired up and hopefully we'll get some nice weather and I'll show you a test ride outside. All right, so unfortunately this uh, drill battery design is not going to work as a final product. Um, I thought going with <laughs> the higher quality Ryobi batteries and going with eight of them was going to uh, be enough, but it's still something in the internals with the batteries. It's still shortening them out. Even the, the good ones, it's burning them up. Um, so I am going to have to basically go back to the drawing board, back to square one, take this all apart and uh, build it with a different battery. But I wanted to show you with the 74 tooth uh, sprocket on. This thing has quite the acceleration, so hopefully I can get uh, a little test run without go going through any more batteries.
right, so this is the last time you'll see the bike in this configuration. Um, I'm going to have to fit a very large, uh, basically 72 volt go-kart battery in here. So this is all going to get redone. Um, and I believe I'll even have to notch the lower section of the frame to fit it. So all of that will be in part two of this video because this video is getting pretty long already. So, uh, well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.